What's up guys, welcome back for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. Next match, Crawl's Balanced Cup. First match of Group B here, two powerhouses are pet up against each other. First of all, we have Extra Deck Monarch from 2016. Brilliant fusion build. I've um, adjusted the list thanks to the feedback of everyone um, from the video a couple of weeks ago. So again, Extra Deck Monarchs with only double Erebus, which was kind of standard for um, the Brilliant Fusion version that is well for Extra Deck Monarchs, right? Uh, double Domain, Triple Storm forth as a huge huge powerhouse and one of the best cards right out of the monarch deck next to pantheism second deck we have sylvan sylvans from 2014 definitely also one of the powerhouses due to triple soul charge you know 2014 formed with triple soul charge and to do one of blaster still legal and let's not forget Triple Vanity's Emptiness, the stealer of a lot of duels. So which deck has the advantage? It should be Monarchs, right? Due to one, one sole reason, and that's Stormfort. Um, the Sylvan deck doesn't have access to Titanic Galaxy, and that's, you know, a huge hinder against something like Monarchs, especially if they have access to Triple Stormfort. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's see the first two. Right, first of all, the opponent gets a start, so that's five cards uh, post the opening rule. Um, and that's a, well, that's not really a fantastic card, right? He's sacrificing his normal summon to go for at least activate Miracle Fertilizer, get his Hermitry on board. He does hit with the effect, but you know, I believe he drew Curry Bandit, yep, but again, he sacrificed his normal summon, so he can't go for Curry Bandit. I like Sylvan as a deck, but again, it's quite, quite slow. Same for Curry Bandit, okay, you can excavate some cards, get maybe a Soul charge or one of your important spells but you need an extra turn right and uh, monarchs having the sixth card here pantheism opening with pantheism is more than enough draw a couple of cards get a surge out of pantheism and if i see the opportunity go for majesty's fiend i'm definitely going for that majesty's fiend such a power creep card right um again it's most of the time such a fantastic card against pretty much every every deck right um, he knows that it's pretty much game over. He can't attack due to soul charge and you know he, I believe he knows that I have Rebus searched from return I believe and the fact that you know Aether is at 3 here for the decklist. Crazy crazy stuff. Um, definitely one of this deck's biggest advantages again playing during your opponent's turn with the interaction of Stormfort and Aether. He did have the what's it called Sage uh, Koi I believe the name is you know but it's just um, you know, inevitable eventually that he will uh, lose the first duel here, even though he started. But again, his start wasn't really too fantastic with a lot of big boss monsters. And that's, you know, Sylvans and Monarchs are kind of same. Like, it, the deck can pretty much only lose to itself if you're, like, breaking. Like, for Sylvans especially, drawing those high monsters without any, um, you know, possibilities. Um, that's a nice top deck, must be nice, drawing the soul charge off of Hermitry that I believe he sent Sprout, yeah, thanks to the um, Mount Sylvania, I believe the name is, and that's a huge, huge soul charge, especially with the Blaster here, he has, yeah, he has a lot of options, Stardust, Spark Dragon also was an option, but again against Monarchs, mm, well, depends, but uh, Dragosek is as strong uh, also. Um, so that's a very good board, right? Double Felgrant and that one of Backroot. That, that might have been, um, at least that might be like uh, Avengers MTS, like a game number one. You know, something I forgot to mention is, you know, uh, activating Brilliant Fusion during my first game opening turn. It, it's just something I um, didn't mention here, but I saw during the replay. I was like, mm, why did I activate Brilliant without anything banished, right? With idea getting something back. Maybe my thought process was like, okay, if I'm going to activate Pantheism, I might draw the last Lazuli, right? That's it's always. Every time I play Brilliant Fusion, I always open the Lazuli or, you know, the Garnet or draw into it. So maybe that was my thought process, but eventually I believe he had the emptiness. Anyway, the Forbidden Lands here on the um, the Felgrant with the material. That's good, since again, Storm 4 doesn't target, so if he lenses that particular Felgrant, okay, I can't tribute it. That particular Felgrant for, you know, any tribute summon, but any other monster I can. Definitely the biggest advantage from Stormfort, or at least one of the advantages of Stormfort over Soul 
uh, exchange and face Getty. Uh, eventually, uh, yeah, I can have uh, a few options, but I think I can go for game here. Thanks to Pleiades bouncing the back row. If he has emptiness, that's all good. I can go for the tribute summon for something like Erebus. But if it's not emptiness, I should be able to go for game. I have a couple of, of uh, options again. I could go for Gaia Saber over Pleiades and then use, you know, just one tribute summon for Erebus, etc. etc. But eventually up to um, go for double Erebus. There's not really matter right um, again this is more than enough for a game so again one of the powerhouses that Stormfort is it's just if the opponent is able to you know establish a very big board but you know one card aka Stormfort just deals with those big boards um, okay, so Monarchs clean 2-0 for Monarchs here over Sylvans. Next matchup should follow, follow uh, very, very soon. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave a card or a like if you enjoyed the video. We can sign out. Peace.